So one one of the one of the main um, things to keep in mind um, when you're when you're becoming successful when you are successful in particular. One of the main things to keep in mind when you are successful is not forgetting how you got there. And, and let me qualify that because, again, for my kids, my grandkids, my brothers and sisters in Kenya, my brothers and sisters in Ghana, for my brother in Bangladesh, and whomever else feel like they benefit from these videos podcasts, audios, however you're listening to it, God bless you. Please like and share them if they're a benefit to you. If they benefit you, they're going to benefit other people. This is my personal Bible study. I do this to leave a legacy for my grandkids and their kids only because I believe that God is telling me to do this as a service and education is changing over the years. Even in the interpretations of the Bible. Stay with me. We're talking about the Levitical order. And the reason why this is such a crucial part of completing the Torah is because so many people believe that now that we're under, quote unquote, under grace and mercy in the New Testament, the Levitical order doesn't apply. When the Levitical order is a picture of grace and mercy. Now, that's my terminology, Levitical order, because I want to use 21st century language. But the Bible just simply says, do not forsake the, the, Levit, uh, the Levite. This is not done because God wants to keep you in bondage and take care of the Levite because they're helpless. The Levites are extremely skilled in their task. Coming from four different families within the Levitical order. Discounting other people's talent and thinking that your talent is the only thing that matters is part of the problem in the descendants of American slaves in particular since I'm here in America. But that is the case around the world. Different countries go into the African continent and pay slave wages in some cases to take the resources out. Remember what I said about real estate insurance and securities? They establish businesses. They take the resources out of the real estate. and they discount the value of the talents of the people in the country. How can they do that? A lack of education. That's why I do this. I want you to know who you are. Without the necessity of being lustful for stuff when you're already rich. That's how people take advantage of you. They show you end results and say, this is more valuable than what you already have. And it's not true. Your talent is very valuable. People who discount your talent are trying to take over. People who partner with your talent and pay you based upon the Levitical order
understand the value of the kingdom of God. We're not probably not going to touch on it all here, but I referenced Numbers chapter 18 and 1 Chronicles chapter 23 when I say this, along with Deuteronomy chapter 12. Esteeming and valuing the, con the contributions of all the players, not only the princes of I Israel, not only the high priest, not only the priest, but the tribe of Levi, who sacrifices their life to serve and by the way they get paid in establishing the kingdom of God it's important to understand that everyone plays a part but not anyone plays all the parts to have a valuable company to have a valuable family it is necessary for us to understand that we all do a certain part within the family or the company. Because of this, it is imperative that we promote each person's talent and without without hindrance, in other words, blocking, giving every person within the kingdom the opportunity to fulfill their destiny. What does this mean? It means you do your part and promote others doing their part without you putting conditions on them being who they are. If you decide you want to put conditions on another person being who they are, you become the hindrance. You become the problem. You become the reason why there is no multiplication. There's no forward movement. It's your fault. It needs to be repented of. That's where you go to the Levites, the high priest, and you repent. And you bring your offering. In bringing your offering, there are many different types of offering that the Levitical priest and the, and the Levites enjoy. God says it belongs to them. Once you've offered it, they get to consume it. Today we call that pay. I wanted to jump away from Deuteronomy 12 until I realized that I did not address this aspect of Deuteronomy 12. It's an important piece. Sometimes people feel as though their part is the most important. All of our parts are important. We need all of us operating in our talent. If the focus is not your personal gain and your focus is, is ushering in the kingdom of heaven, then it is required of you to recognize the talent, the offices of all the players without their being unnecessary human traditions blocking them. In other words, unless they do what I tell them to do, I'm not going to do what they want to do, what they need to do they're passionate about.
opening up the floodgates for the for the Levi gives them an opportunity to exercise their passion towards God by serving you. Deuteronomy chapter 12 says this in verse 19. Deuteronomy 12, 19. Take heed to thyself that thou forsake not the Levite as long as thou lives, livest upon the earth. When the Lord thy God shall enlarge thy border as he hath promised thee. If you have not made provision for the Levite, not the high priest, not the church pastor, this is where we get it twisted in the New Testament. The Levite has multiple purposes. Levi could be your praise and worship singer. The Levi could be the guy who's taking care of the building itself, the maintenance worker. The Levi could be the person that is actually building an extension onto one of the, the, the wings of your facility. These principles also work in business. So whether it's in ministry, traditional ministry as we understand it, these principles also work in conventional business. Why is this important? Because the Levitical tribe has been given as a gift to the high priest. It does not mean that the high priest, the pastor, gets to use them for free as the princes of Israel the congregation and their leadership gives heave offerings or what today would be called tithes and offerings to dedicated to the high priest and the priest who go behind the veil to make offerings for those who come to them for a variety of purposes. I want to travel back just a little bit just to give you an idea of what I mean. Just so you know that this isn't coming off the top of my head. This is coming straight from the Torah. And it is recognized by many branches of Israel. I'm doing this primarily for my kids, my grandkids, and those who consider me a teacher. But I'm also aware that a lot of Christians as you're so aptly named, do not believe in these processes, these, pro these processes and procedures. But these are laws of the kingdom, which are like laws of nature. You know it in very summarized terminology like give and it shall be given. Press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. These are the principles of your New Testament scriptural characteristics. In Numbers chapter 18, verse 1, it says this, And the Lord said unto Aaron, at that time the high priest, Thou and thy sons and thy father's house, Thou and thy sons. This word sons is very important. Does not have to be biological children. 
Hebrew reference 1121. This could be your grandchildren. This could be your adopted children. Thou and thy sons and thy father's house with thee shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. And thou and thy sons with thee shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. And thy brethren, verse 2, also of the tribe of Levi, the tribe of thy father, bring thou with thee that they may be joined unto thee and minister unto thee. So the Levites minister unto the priest and the high priest. They serve them. They do as they are required. They keep charge of the sanctuary. It's not the part I want to read though. Numbers chapter 18, verse 8. And the Lord spake, Numbers 18, verse 8. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Behold, I also have given thee the charge of my heave offerings of all the hollow things of the children of Israel. The children of Israel bring the offering, in this case the heave offering, to the high priest. And unto have I given them by reason of the anointing and to thy sons by, the, by an ordinance forever. Verse 9, it says, This shall be thine of the most holy things, which I made a video on this, but I want to reemphasize this. From the, from, the, uh, from the holy things, from the fire, tested, excellent quality. Every oblation of theirs, every meat offering of theirs of the children of Israel, every trespass offering of theirs, which they shall render unto me most holy for thee and for thy son. So this addresses the high priest and the priest. Verse 12, the best of the oil the wine, wheat, first fruits of them they shall offer unto the Lord. Them have I given. It's important that you understand that this is the order of things. And being that this is the order of things, it's necessary that if we want to be successful and maintain success, that we don't get over our skis, and maybe that's the wrong way to put it, but this is 21st century language, right? Or that we um, don't get so into ourselves and our pursuit of success that we forget that we have responsibilities to our whole family. The Levites are part of your family. Sometimes I talk to people and they look down on Levites. And I think it's because they don't recognize who a Levite is, what a Levite is, who a Levite is, what a Levite is, who and what. They think Levites are only, the only application of a Levite is in the Jewish community, prefer, uh, usually uh, Eastern European Jew, when it's an office, it's a position, it's a calling. And that they even live outside the borders of a temple. don't recognize them because you're not necessarily looking for them. The Levitical priest is your support system 
to the visionary. The visionary needs Levitical participation. <laughs> to bring forth the vision that God has given them. I say this and people don't take me seriously. I'm not necessarily a visionary. I'm not necessarily a business person. I, I, I was talking to the president of an organization that I'm a member of. We just started about four months ago. And when he, when he was becoming president, I said to him, you be president because people don't hear me as a president or priest in this case. I'm sorry, as a, as a prince in this case. A prince. This has to do with business. But people do hear me as a priest. has a business application of spiritual leadership, has a ministry application, as we call it ministry, or uh, some people call it church, some people call it temple. But don't necessarily see me. And, and it's not just me, it's, it's how we have learned how to interact with each other. We have been wrongly taught that it's all about accomplishing your goal. Sometimes I talk to business people and they're doing a particular thing, probably some type of marketing of some type of product or service, and they talk to people specifically only for recruiting. And if you don't do what they want you to do, then they no longer want to talk to you because they believe in the numbers game. I just got to find people who wants to do what I do. In business, this is not true. On the business end, not marketing, on the business end, we're looking for people who have a plethora or a lot of different talents and that they're passionate about. Everyone is not passionate about being a visionary. And your job is not to make them passionate about your vision. It's making them passionate about who they are. By supporting them, giving them opportunity to be fully who they are. As a Levitical support system, But if they don't do what you want them to do, even though it doesn't line up with who they are, then you decide they're not useful. Or they're not valuable enough to pay. Because they're not like you. Cash app, dollar sign, Mr. Paul Dozier. Cash app, dollar sign Mr. Paul Dozier we're on a journey from Genesis to Revelation I do not know how long it's going to take but thank you for taking the journey with me and thank you for taking the journey with us if you're in America you can also support me with paulcdozier at gmail.com paulcdozier at gmail.com. P as in Peter, A U L, C as in Charles, D as in David, O Z like zebra, I E R, at gmail.com. You can also be supportive by picking up a copy of Ghetto Education. It's, in, it's on Amazon, so it's pretty easy to locate. Just type in Paul C. Dozier or Ghetto Education, Paul C. Dozier. And the Christ Culture, the Business of Ministry. These are two of my favorite four books. And thank you for taking the journey with me. Thank you for taking the journey with us.